Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Dolls, the United Federation of Doll Clubs YouTube channel. Today, we are interviewing a world-renowned doll artist who began her career as a caricature artist. Her first sculpt won an Industry's Choice Award in 2012, and she's won many more since then. Her name's Judy Porter. Judy is also one of 10 meal event souvenir artists invited to participate in the United Federation of Doll Clubs National Convention. So I invite you to enjoy Judy, her interview, and her dolls. Hello, everybody. Um, Welcome, welcome to Adventures in Dolls. Today we have with us a world-renowned artist. Um, she has been working for over 30 years as an artist. And in 2012, won the Industry's Choice Doll of the Year Award. And of course, she's won, you know, several since then. She makes modern vinyl dolls and BJDs, and her name is Judy Porter. And her little BJDs are something very special. So let's talk to her now. I'd like to introduce you to Judy. Let's talk to her and find out just what's so special about them. Hi, Judy. Hey, Karen. Hi, everybody. We're so glad to have you with us today. Well, I feel very honored to be a part of this. It's just so fun. The one thing, when did you um, start making these adorable little dolls with the big eyes? Well, uh, as you mentioned, I've been a working artist probably well I've drawn I've drawn my whole life but I've been a working artist since 1997 and then uh in 2012 I made my first ball jointed doll and had it cast in resin and that doll won an award that year which I showed absolutely no class about the whole thing I was hopping up and down okay? <laughs> because I did not expect that but but that was my first doll I had tried you know, for a few years before I worked with Paula McLean, I'd done caricature dolls because I was working as a caricature artist. And a lot of times I would get hired to do um, a three-dimensional caricature of somebody. So I had some fun with that for a while first. No awards there, wasn't part of the doll industry. <laughs> it certainly sounds fun. Um, do your little characters represent something about you well well everyone says they do um i think they they represent happiness they represent the innocence of childhood i had a wonderful childhood wonderful parents and they're just they're happy and basically i'm a pretty happy person i do have occasionally people say your dolls look like you which truthfully Karen um the last thing I do is try to make a doll that looked like me but, here, <laughs> but here's the thing if you'll notice with with each artist each doll sculptor you will see something of them or their family in their work we just we all do that we're we're recognizable by our work by our it's, style I think maybe do you think it's because it's familiar Yes, definitely. And I've drawn, uh, I've drawn um, all kinds of people for events for 30 years. And um, I don't put myself into those drawings. But as each artist I've had that worked for me as caricature artist, I, I could recognize their work, even if they didn't sign it. Because we all have a style. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. We have a style. Um, well, what other people or other artists have inspired you? Did, have oh you had a mentor, maybe? 
Oh, absolutely. Um, when I first started, you know, I realized I needed a lot of help because it's not as easy to go from two dimensional as three dimensional. There's sculptors that don't draw. There's artists that don't sculpt. Some can't, some don't make that crossover, but I always draw my dolls before I sculpt them. And when I wanted to learn to start sculpting, I started reaching out to different artists. I'd taken probably Jack Johnson was my first class and he does very caricature work. Um, not to evaluate anybody's work, but he's great. And Diana Eppner, she didn't live too far from me in Missouri. So I went over and spent a week with her. But the main artist that took me under their wing and really mentored me was Pat Moulton. Oh, yes. And at, the, at the time, she did baby dolls. But the, the changeover to childlike ball jointed dolls was just starting to happen. And Burdine uh, Creedy was probably one of the first and foremost to start making that, that switch. And at that point, then I decided, hey, I really like ball jointed dolls, but I want them in a childlike form. So that's that's where I went. That's where you went. Oh, um, what part of the creation of the doll do you most enjoy? Is it is it the sculpt or is it the design? Um, it's the sculpting. Is it now? When I sit down and I do a drawing and I start designing a doll, you know, I always enjoy the drawing process. But when you get the polymer clay out and you really start making a face, <laughs> creating a doll, that's that's probably my favorite part. Then that's when you add the character, I think, probably. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so and, uh, how do you want your collectors to consider your work? I mean, what what? do you aim to want your dolls to say? Of course, I love my collectors. So the thing I want to express is happiness, is the innocence of childhood. And my catchphrase for my uh, company is little kids doing what little kids do. Because oh, that's so perfect for your dolls. <laughs> because that, that's what I'm trying to represent. The things, the childhood imagination, uh, I'm talking with my hands. I hope I'm not getting them in the way. <laughs> no. My husband said, if you tie my hands back, I can't talk. Um, <laughs> just, just the innocence and the beauty of childhood. So is there any food or drink or uh, <laughs> snack that inspires you? You know, sometimes I have to sit down with a... <laughs> a diet coke and a snack and think something through i don't know <laughs> well you know i'm a little midwestern gal but i've lived in the south so sweet tea i love iced tea and i drink cold tea all year round <laughs> so usually when i'm working there's a glass of tea sitting there uh -huh. now if it's real cold in my studio i might have you know chai tea but for the most part, it's iced tea. And as far as a snack, you know, I'm not really a sweet tooth kind of gal, but if it's something salty and crunchy, I will dive right in. Yes. <laughs> but I tend not to I tend not to have food around when I sculpt because yeah. all the transfers <laughs> right into your clay. You you'd have everything in it, I think. Yes, yeah. <laughs> what else did I want to ask you? Oh, I wanted to know, is there a real life situation you had that propelled your career, moved you, you know, that you can remember? That moved me into the doll world? Mm -hmm. um, yes. My sister was doing um, reborns and she says to me, you can draw people. Do you know there's real artists that sculpt these dolls, these baby dolls? And I'm like, really? I mean, you know, I wasn't in the doll world. I was a caricature artist and I hadn't really thought about it. She goes, yeah, you, you can do this. Well, <laughs> so my sister had more confidence in me than I did because, like I say, going from two-dimensional to three-dimensional. But my sister, she's the one who, who said, you've got to try this. And I did. And I had a lot of, we call them deadheads. Mm -hmm. That's uh, just 
and that's not a derogatory term, but it's like just doll faces that didn't make it. So, <laughs> and like Jack Johnson said, I think he said you you'll have, you'll sculpt about fifteen dolls before you ever get one you like. Mm -hmm. but I probably had twenty in that basket of you know no go, <laughs> but it's good practice. And for any new artist, I would say don't get discouraged i did some really awful things and we all do and just stay with it stay with keep it. practicing <laughs> it's not easy if it were yeah. easy everyone would be doing it so well where were you from um how how does your your background and your childhood make your art unique well, like I said, I'm a Midwestern gal. I was uh, born and raised in Overland Park, Kansas. And then my folks moved us to a farm out in the middle of nowhere when I was 14. I thought my life was over. But <laughs> the whole thing with art is ever since I was, I can remember, I always drew. Other kids would go out and play and I was, I was drawing. And I always got kudos in school, not from my math, but for my drawing <laughs> and I, I don't remember when I didn't do art. It's just always been, um, it's been my therapy. I wasn't a very healthy little kid and it's, it's been my salvation in good times and bad. And I've just always, always done art. It keeps me sane. There are those who would question that, but it keeps me sane. <laughs> sort of. Oh, isn't that the truth? Oh, my goodness. And that's what my husband would say. Uh, <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, do you have a favorite or a, a inspirational place that you go to to get inspiration? If you're, do you ever get blocked, as they say? Uh, you know, not really. I have a, I have a really nice walkout basement in Missouri. Obviously, nobody has a basement in Florida, but a big studio. And um, if I'm feeling, you know, I can always draw and, and get, you know, kind of in the artistic mode. So, and sometimes I'll just pick up some clay and I have no plan whatsoever. And I just start pushing around on it until something happens. Maybe no nothing kidding. happens. Oh, but my goodness. Inspiration. You know, a lot of people say, well, I can't. I can't work till I feel like it. Well, if you're a professional artist and you have to meet deadlines, you better start feeling like it. You know, it's yeah. like, just, just do what you have to do. <laughs> and then, and then about 10 minutes into it, two or three hours are gone and you've just had a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. And you've created something fabulous. That's the way the muse works. Do you have to do any research at all before you? create dolls um, yes um sometimes I'll, I'll research the costuming because even though i can sew i don't do my own sewing i just can't do everything but um i do my own designing and then i have a wonderful seamstress that can kind of put my words to music so sometimes i'll research that sometimes i look through photographs or online um to find a little face that that speaks to me you know that i'm like yeah i want to sculpt that little girl or that little boy or you know and of course you never copy exactly because you don't want to get you know freak out somebody's parents but you know so you you, you see inspiration everywhere mm -hmm. even in a restaurant i'll see some cute little kid and if you're going to take a picture you better do it very stealth <laughs> <laughs> but i'll remember a face i'm good at remembering a face not so much a name, but I'm good at remembering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell us something, um, you know, that you really love and something that you dislike. Oh, goodness. There's not much that I dislike. Um, I don't like doctor's appointments. They start leaning me over to that scale and I just start to. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm yes. I used to work in a hospital and emergency room and all of this, but I don't like being the patient. No. Um, things that I really like, I'm a real people person. I like people. I, I can't really think of any person I've ever met that I was just, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll find something. I'll find something good about everybody. Mm -hmm. Something good and something interesting. Um, yes. That's good. I, I'm that way too. I really enjoy people. Really. I can I people watch even, you know, just watch. Yeah. Um, that's fun. Walmart is um, a good place to watch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or the airport. There's a fun place to watch. Well, you know, every artist has positives and negatives about their work. So sure. do you have positive and negatives about yours? Oh, absolutely. I think a lot of times when you're sculpting, um, I question myself a lot. You know, and then when you, you, you can't really think in terms of what's marketable for me. I have to think in terms of what I like, you know, if, if I'm going to present a little, a little childlike doll, it has to appeal to me first. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I could, you know, jump out of my comfort zone and say, do a very voluptuous adult type female or, um, you know, and, God bless everybody who loves that. It's just in, in sculpting, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. So did that answer your question? Yes. <laughs> I tend to, my husband says I just take off. So if I do just rein me back in. Just rein uh, me back in. Well, what's the best piece of advice that you've been ever been given? Just keep practicing. And don't get discouraged. Just keep on no. going. Oh, just yeah. keep. And it, it is, uh, I would have to say, as a two-dimensional artist for most of my life, it, it is hard to go from two-dimensional to three-dimensional. You tend to, you know that the skull is round. These are things that you know, but you tend to sculpt the front of the face flat because you're still thinking two-dimensional. So, you know, the best advice I had gotten from the mentors that I've had, but especially Pat, is just keep going. You know, the ones you don't like, that's clay you can use over. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the last question I'll ask you uh, before we get to look at your dolls is mm -hmm. that uh, your dolls are really, really special. How do they speak to you? Well, can I show you a few? These are yes. these are new for uh, 2022. Oh. And there's there's a little backstory behind these because as a child, I had a very vivid imagination. We had woods behind our house and I considered myself the guardian of the woods. Now, I thought fairies and gnomes and all kinds of creatures live there. But this is just little kids doing what little kids do. This isn't a fairy, it isn't a gnome, it's just the little kid who thinks they're the guardian of the woods. Mm -hmm. So I came up with these little 6.5 inch dolls called the guardians. This one, let me see if you can, I'm not really have my camera turned this way. Oh, oh. This is, this is the guardian of the dolls and doll collectors because those are the special people to me and she watches out for the dolls and doll collectors. And she even has her own little, now this is hand sculpted. It's not resin. It's not cast in resin. Am I holding that up where you can see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh she my has goodness. Her own little doll. This is an event doll um, for a, uh, another group. <laughs> and then I thought, well, I love snow but not all year round. So I have the little guardian of the snowflakes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so adorable. And then last but not least, because believe it or not, spring is coming. This is my little guardian of spring. And oh. can't really see a camera to tell if we've got her up there, but can, yep. can you see? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, oh, she's <laughs> darling. Those are the, uh, new series that I have for this year and then I had done the 12 inch toddler dolls which are very much little kids doing what little kids do and I have a 
a couple of new ones to introduce in 2022. So I'll be sharing that at UFDC oh, at my fun. table. So everybody come by. <laughs> oh, you're going to have a table in the sales room? Yes. Oh, yeah. that'll be great. That'll be great. Oh, fabulous. Um, let's see. I was going to share my screen, see if I couldn't get up some of your um, other dolls. Uh, now, that oh, was my, my first little toddler, and that's Addie Joy. She's 12-inch resin ball jointed doll, and she actually looks like uh, my great-granddaughter. Oh. Didn't realize, didn't realize it when I was sculpting, but we got home from visiting her and I said, I told my husband, I said, who does that face look like? And he goes, Addie Joy. Oh. <laughs> I hadn't even, I hadn't even seen her yet. Oh, for heaven's now, sakes. That's not magic. That's just, I don't know. It just worked out that way. But she, oh. she's been a, she's been a popular little girl in the group. Oh, yes. She's adorable. Let's see. Shall we go to the available or the gallery? Uh, surprise me. <laughs> How about okay, this one? Okay, that's Maudie, and she is another one of the 12-inch uh, toddler size dolls. Um, that cute knitted outfit she has is was done by a Russian artist, which I was fortunate to, to procure that. Maudie is one of my... Uh, I just love sculpting her face. She was one of my, a little more quirky looking. Oh, she's I've seen so her. cute. So cute. She, and the clothes just fit her. That hat just kills me. Isn't that, isn't that something? Yeah. yeah. The, the, those ladies that, that did that knitting, um, I was so fortunate to get several things from them. And it's just incredible work. It really is. Oh, yeah. It's gorgeous. So she that's asked, Maudie. I will share this. She that that Maudie in that outfit just sold the other day. So I need to mark that. But <laughs> oh, <laughs> but I do have more, I do have more Maudies and I do have more outfits like that in different okay. colors. <laughs> okay. And here's Addie that's, Joy. That's Addie Joy. And that's you know, that's the fun of ball jointed dolls. There's you know, you change the wig, you change the eyes, you change the outfit, you have a new doll. Mm -hmm. So that's the different ways Addie Joy can look. And it, that's amazing. That really is amazing. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, so cute. So darn cute. I tell you what. And, you know, the fact that they're ball jointed and oh, that you can pose them. Right. You, you can you can change the I know a lot of of collectors maybe that don't do ball or not familiar with ball jointed dolls. Don't be afraid to pop the back of that doll's head off and change their eyes and their wig. You can't hurt anything. You're not going to, you know, nothing scary is going to happen. You might have the eyes, you know, a little weird, but you can always adjust it. <laughs> <laughs> this doll you're showing now is Maisie. And she's a little more of a tomboy. When I created her, uh, I was thinking, you know, she's my little more athletic outdoors. The child I never was. <laughs> yes. So that's. that's Isn't that cute? Yeah. She's got a cute little Valentine outfit on. Yes. And that one I've had, that one is actually sold. I should take that one down, but um, I do have more Maisie's. I just don't have any more of those outfits. You know, I, one, I should show the hat and the boots and the, anything that comes from China is getting really um, difficult to source, you know? Oh, just because, well, not just it, not just China. That's it's, I shouldn't say that, but any, of our products that we uh, that we get like mm -hmm. a lot of the shoes do come from China and the wigs and the eyes and those things it's it's one of the our main companies went kaputs and and it's just getting harder to source those things so if mm -hmm. you feel like the, if you feel like the artists are are gouging you with a price hike it's not their fault we just can't they're doing it yeah. to us mm -hmm. yeah and, and I don't mean China. I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just saying that it's harder to get things. Oh, it's and shipping terrible. shipping has gone up. Yeah, everything is wacko. That's true. That's true. Without making any political statements here, that's <laughs> <laughs> all I'm saying is sourcing has become a bigger problem. Yes. Oh, look! Look at this group. So cute. Well, thank you. Now. 
Luna, the one that's kind of wearing a little one piece outfit with the stripes. Um, she was an event doll last year and she, in, in that look, she sold out. Um, I do have more, <laughs> uh -huh. but maybe just a little bit different look. And the neat thing about the way I, I like to do my dolls is I make it unique for each collector. If you say, okay, I like Maisie, but I really like, you know, purple or I want a cowboy look or whatever. It's like, okay, I'll put it together for you. And oh. that way, that way it's your special Maisie. It's not just there's 10 of these or there's 12 of these. Or 150 of them. Or 150. Mm -hmm. The other thing I should share is. You know, if it is an event doll and say, you know, the event calls for 85, well, then there's 85 dolls like that and then no more, you know, mm -hmm. that's been, that look has been retired. So like I, oh. like I do, like I do I, for I just love the clothing. It's just there. It's just adorable. Oh, oh, look at that raggedy and just adorable. Now. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's be sure to sh to share your website. Let's see. Did I get all the pictures? Um. Well, probably enough. I don't. You know, it's so funny. I so seldom go in there and check, which I should do more often. And uh, oh, update. There you are. Oh yes, yeah. I went to see. Oh, uh, here's a few. Uh, an artist in Hawaii that had my dolls in her in her uh, shop. So. Oh. Now, oh, and that's my lovely daughter. She's one with the long blonde hair. She's she's inspired my doll Annie, and she looks incredibly like her. Oh, <laughs> so she won an award one year. Well, it's this little doll in the pink dress with a teddy bear. Yes. That's Annie. Now, when, I, when Annie. I do it with blonde hair and brown eyes, it's my daughter. <laughs> yes, yes. And they the are. interesting thing about the dolls along the bottom here that that have awards um i knew and this doesn't happen very often but i knew when i sculpted like uh different faces that they were going to work you know that they were there was going to be a market for them sometimes you're not sure when i sculpted Maddie, i thought me i'm probably going to be the only person in the whole world that likes her and she'd been a big seller, but I didn't expect that. Mm -hmm. And then some of the some of these that you see, like one of the little one in blue, Sierra, that was my first doll I did in 2012. Mm -hmm. That's the one that won an award where I hopped up and down. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing that you just did that and that is the first doll you did. I, I can't even imagine yeah. doing something like that. I have to give Pat Bolton. Uh, credit because you know she helped me every step of the way yeah. it would be like sculpt a little what do you think pat mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she was always so good about if it wasn't good she didn't gloss it over it's mm -hmm. like no you know save your clay start over <laughs> oh just really special i love it oh well thank you well i'm going to stop sharing now okay Unfortunately, in this little pint-sized studio in Florida, I, I, you know, I'd gotten these samples um, from China, but I just didn't have much here, you know, to share with you. Mm -hmm. But I'll surprise you at UFDC whenever we have convention. Oh, I'm I can't wait. I'll stop by to see you. Oh, please sure. do. Yes. Every, everyone, come and see me. We yes. have fun at my booth. <laughs> Oh, I bet. Judy, it's it's absolutely been my pleasure meeting you. I you, you're just delightful. No wonder your dolls are so delightful. No wonder. Well, thank you. Thank yes. you. So sweet of you to say. Well, I, I try. Oh, <laughs> yes. I appreciate you talking with us and showing us your dolls so much. I appreciate and, um, you at BC so much because you know it's a real honor to be asked to be an event artist i never take that for granted ever mm -hmm. it's 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 truly an honor to be part of ufgc but it's also an honor to be asked to do an event mm -hmm. so please come to my event we're going to oh, have yes. fun oh yes <laughs> <laughs> i would love to love to love to well 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. Thank you, Karen. And uh, I'll see you in, let's see, when are we supposed to go there? August. No. August. August. It'll be here before you know it. I know it will be. <laughs> see you in St. Louis, huh? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Hello and welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the program today. We'd like to thank Judy Porter for her time and her most excellent interview. If you are interested in getting in touch with her or seeing more of her dolls, um, you can do that at judyporter.com. Or if you're lucky enough to go to the United Federation of Doll Clubs uh, National Convention, uh, she will be in the sales room. Um, so in the meantime, if you have any other comments, please leave them in the comment section below. You know we'd love to hear from you. Um, and become a member of the United Federation of Dog Clubs today. Simply go to the website. The link is at the bottom of the page. Fill out the forms, become a member, and don't forget to tell them that Karen sent you.